Recent data analysis has provided us with valuable insights into the dynamic geological activity occurring within the Yellowstone system. Keenly observant researchers who have diligently monitored the Yellowstone data have reported a significant surge in magma movement over the past few months. This influx of magma has caused noticeable shifts in the Earth's crust, resulting in the emergence of ground fractures which have become increasingly evident in the vicinity of the park. Moreover, local residents have heightened their awareness of seismic activity as they have reported an unusual frequency of earthquakes surpassing the norm. In an effort to comprehensively understand this phenomenon, it becomes evident that substantial geological processes are taking place beneath the Yellowstone region. One of the most recent discoveries that has captivated numerous individuals is the unearthing of a substantial bulge within the park. Amateur researchers have astoundingly proposed that this bulge might be a significant magma-filled pocket. Keen observers who frequently survey the live cameras have noticed the emergence of a dome-shaped formation beneath the park. To validate this observation, they diligently collected a series of photographs taken from different dates. This astute comparison undeniably reveals that something of great magnitude is brewing beneath the park, raising significant intrigue and piquing the curiosity of onlookers. Following the circulation of the photographs, individuals began to express their viewpoints regarding the depicted scene. One user voiced a noteworthy observation, saying that there appears to be a significant geological shift occurring at Yellowstone. This astute comparison undeniably reveals that something of great magnitude is brewing beneath the park, raising significant intrigue and piquing the curiosity of onlookers. Following the circulation of the photographs, individuals began to express their viewpoints regarding the depicted scene. One user voiced a noteworthy observation saying that there appears to be a significant geological shift occurring at Yellowstone. Evidently, even within the relatively limited span of a few months, distinct changes in the landscape can be discerned. It is evident that some powerful force is exerting outward pressure, causing the land to visibly expand. This observation raises intriguing questions about the underlying forces at work in this geological phenomenon, warranting an in-depth investigation to uncover the true nature and implications of this peculiar occurrence at Yellowstone. Upon careful observation of the ongoing updates, it has caught my attention that the occurrence of earthquakes in Yellowstone is not an unusual phenomenon. Being in a region that experiences numerous swarms annually, it is expected to witness seismic activities. However, what I can confidently state is that the current situation seems to deviate from the norm with a notable increase in frequency. Moreover, an intriguing aspect that demands attention is the presence and consistent expansion of a significant bulge within the park's boundaries. This bulge, steadily growing in size, poses an intriguing conundrum that requires further analysis and understanding. By delving into the comprehensive details of these developments, we can enrich our comprehension of the unique geological dynamics taking place in Yellowstone National Park. According to a resident living in close proximity to the park, there have been noticeable movements in the area. Over the past few months, the individual, along with their neighbours, have experienced seismic activity related to the ongoing earthquake activity in the Yellowstone region. However, in recent times, there have been significant tremors occurring throughout the park. This has raised concerns regarding the formation of a substantial dome beneath the park's surface. The resident expressed unease about the current situation, as there has been no discussion or acknowledgement of these occurrences by scientists or park officials. Uncertain about the need to take any immediate action, they contemplate the possibility of making plans to evacuate the area. The resident hopes that the observed phenomena are within the realm of normalcy, but remains apprehensive given the lack of information from authoritative sources. The dome that has gained attention and sparked discussions among people is drawing parallels to a similar occurrence witnessed on Mount St. Helens in 1980. During that time, an anomalous bulge formed on the northern side of the mountain as a result of the upward surge of magma deep within the volcano. Concerned residents, along with those who have seen visuals of the current dome, express their hopes that a comparable event does not unfold, fearing potential magma accumulation in the area. The importance of this dome lies in its reminder of the past volcanic activity, leading individuals to closely monitor and assess the situation 
with a sense of caution and anticipation. According to some theories, the ongoing earthquakes in Yellowstone National Park are beginning to have a significant impact, suggesting that the underlying volcanic chamber is becoming more fragile. Moreover, there seems to be a noticeable rise in the number of gas outlets emerging at the park's surface. This indicates that there might be a complex interplay of geological activity taking place beneath the Earth's crust, with potential consequences for the region. The United States Geological Survey has garnered concern for its lack of coverage regarding the recent seismic activity at Yellowstone Lake. Notably, there have been many reports of earthquake swarms, yet the United States Geological Survey has not addressed this issue adequately. A vigilant individual who monitors this data has emphasized the disconcerting fact that some data has gone missing. He asserts that it is unjust for the United States Geological Survey to withhold information from the public, prompting him to take this matter to Congress to voice his grievances. His primary contention stems from the belief that individuals have the right to be informed about the current situation. Moreover, he deems the concealment of certain data as evidence of a cover-up. Others have echoed this sentiment, expressing worry over the growing undersea dome beneath Yellowstone. Even if this phenomenon is deemed normal, they argue that the United States Geological Survey should still come forward and provide an explanation to assuage public concerns. Notwithstanding, there are individuals who do not express any apprehension regarding the heightened activity witnessed at Yellowstone. They argue that seismic swarms have been occurring in the region for several years without any significant occurrences. Additionally, they assert that the fluctuation in the size of land masses surrounding Yellowstone is a recurrent phenomenon that transpires annually, attributed to various factors. Conversely, there are those who are genuinely concerned due to the absence of regular updates from the United States Geological Survey regarding these changes. The current lack of communication has raised eyebrows among the public who rely on the survey's updates for information. This comprehensive analysis strives to shed light on the diverse viewpoints surrounding the recent surge in activity at Yellowstone. If the Yellowstone volcano were to erupt, the survival of individuals would not only depend on the immediate aftermath but also on the subsequent consequences. Extensive research has revealed that the eruption of a supervolcano often triggers a significant global cooling event. This cooling occurs due to the expulsion of a substantial volume of volcanic ash, which blankets the Earth, blocking sunlight and hindering the planet's ability to warm up. As a result, a global ice age ensues. We have evidence of such a catastrophic event occurring roughly 100,000 years ago when the Toba super eruption took place. This eruption had a profound impact on humanity, nearly pushing us to the brink of extinction. Before the eruption, the estimated human population was approximately 1 million. However, as a direct consequence of the Toba eruption, only around 11,000 humans survived. These drastic population losses resulted in a significant bottleneck effect offering valuable insights into the timing and magnitude of this cataclysmic event. It is crucial to understand that surviving the initial eruption is just the beginning of the challenges. The subsequent global cooling and the potential onset of a worldwide ice age would pose immense difficulties for human civilization. Therefore, preparedness and adaptation strategies must be a priority to ensure survival and mitigate the devastating effects of such cataclysmic events. Moreover, the occurrence of a rapid death toll can also be observed during the Toba super eruption, which was responsible for triggering a worldwide blackout that endured for more than a decade. This extended period of darkness resulted in the onset of a colossal ice age and an atmospheric cooling event that lasted for an additional millennium. Taking these historical occurrences into account, it is anticipated that if the Yellowstone supervolcano were to erupt in present times, the immense amount of volcanic ash expelled into the atmosphere would envelop the entire globe, obscuring the sun's rays for an estimated period of six to seven years. Consequently, such a catastrophic event would induce a modern-day ice age, enveloping the Earth in seemingly perpetual darkness and yielding unprecedentedly frigid temperatures that have never been recorded before. Some scientists have said that we could have less than two weeks before an eruption occurred, saying that after the warning signs were detected, there's not much we could do to prepare for an event like this. Worryingly in the past, several of these warning signs were detected around the park, 
These included seismic activity increasing and an increase of gas outlets at the surface. Not only this, but researchers working at the park have said new erupting vents and surface fractures have started opening. The Yellowstone supervolcano is a large active volcanic system located primarily in the northwest corner of Wyoming, in the United States. It's considered to be one of the largest and most dangerous volcanoes on Earth, with the ability to produce catastrophic eruptions that could affect the entire planet. The Yellowstone supervolcano has been given this name because it's a type of volcano known as a supervolcano, which is defined as a volcano capable of producing an eruption with a volume of more than 1,000 cubic kilometers. The Yellowstone supervolcano has erupted several times in the past, with the most recent eruption occurring about 640,000 years ago. The most significant eruption occurred about 2.1 million years ago, producing an ashfall that covered much of the western United States. The Yellowstone supervolcano is monitored closely by scientists, who use a variety of techniques to detect changes in the volcano's behavior. This monitoring includes measuring ground deformation, monitoring earthquake activity, and studying gas emissions. Rather worryingly, just recently, Russian officials have come forward and said that they have the ability to make Yellowstone erupt. This was recently announced on a television station, where they said that a Satan II nuke would be able to achieve this. One military commentator said that this new missile that has been developed is a special one, and that it has the ability to deliver a large number of nuclear warheads at once. The military official said the following, it's impossible to build an all-looking defense system, which means that the United States is vulnerable. That is the first point. And the second point is that the Sarmat poses a threat to the most feared facility on United States territory, the Yellowstone volcano. End quote. They carried on by saying that if they were to do this, it would bring America to its knees, and said that United States officials should be careful what they say. The United States Geological Society has come forward and said that this would not be possible and pointed out that the supervolcano located under Yellowstone cannot be set off in this manner. Military commentators have said this comment may have been made due to the fact that President Biden visited the Ukrainian capital. As some have pointed out though, regardless of whether or not the supervolcano would erupt, there's still people living in this area and an attack of this type would have a direct effect on them. According to the home statistics, there's currently over 1,000 people living directly inside Yellowstone National Park, with other residents living just outside of the park. Military insiders have said that this isn't a good sign, and that as of right now the relationship between the United States and Russia is not good, saying that it's the worst that it's been in years. Launching a missile of any kind is always going to have disastrous effects. All we can do right now is hope that it doesn't reach this point. One of the greatest fears of the modern era, due to its potential to cause an apocalyptic scenario never seen before, is that of the eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano. Though many might not be aware of its dangers, it appears to pose one of the greatest realistic chances of wiping out the majority of life on Earth and possibly lead to the extinction of the human race. Referred to by scientists as a catastrophic supereruption, the force and material that would be ejected from the massive Yellowstone supervolcano would be among one of the largest explosions to ever be recorded on the face of the Earth. When looking at estimated comparisons of this pressure and ejection of magma compared to that of the Mount St. Helens explosion, of which was claimed to be equivalent to the blasting force of 1,600 times the size of the atomic weapon dropped on the Japanese city of Hiroshima, it appears that the eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano would be roughly 10,000 times larger in estimated cubic kilometers than that of the eruption at Mount St. Helens. What this essentially translates to would be the immediate ejection of more than 2,500 cubic kilometers of ash, magma and materials, a size much larger than that of the 0.25 cubic kilometers ejected after the Mount St. Helens eruption. Though the supervolcano isn't expected to cause a massive upheaval of land, this large amount of pressure being released will still cause a blast wave that can cause damage out past the states of Wyoming, Idaho and Montana. Additionally, the Yellowstone supervolcano lies close to a number of sensitive fault lines all across the west coast. It's believed that this massive amount of pressure released in one moment, coupled with the massive amount of force generated via the super eruption, will create a domino effect of seismic activity that could lead to fault lines completely sliding in opposite directions, 
causing a number of massive earthquakes all across the west coast. The earthquakes would be some of the largest ever to have been recorded and would only lead to further damage of roads, highways, cities and nearby constructions, completely blocking off those affected from reaching the help they would need. The eruption of the massive Yellowstone supervolcano will do much more than just emit a large amount of materials from the volcano itself. It's predicted that the massive amount of force and pressure released by the volcano will trigger other pockets of magma to release nearby in quick-forming shafts that will grow in size throughout the volcano's eruption. Though scientists are aware of the fact that the eruption of a volcano cannot trigger the eruption of nearby volcanoes, in the event of a supervolcano and its eruption, the incredibly large amount of forces and material buildup will lead to a pocket of nearby magma vents to form, creating a number of normal volcanic entities that will also spew out a large amount of volcanic materials. Though, technically speaking, the Yellowstone supervolcano is not triggering other dormant volcanoes, it will continue to form these vents, which will grow in size, and will appear to be similar to that of smaller volcanoes having formed. It's also believed that with a large enough tectonic plate shift, caused by the overwhelming seismic activity that will be caused by the forces of eruption behind the supervolcano, a number of large events could form along the ridges of the shifting tectonic plates. If these plates shift enough, not only would there be a number of massive earthquakes, but there could be a number of newly formed volcanic entities all along the entire west coast. In essence, this means that the eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano would lead to a number of following eruptions, newly formed magma vents, and a domino effect of seismic activity that could cause the formation of new active volcanoes all along the entirety of the west coast of the United States, of which will only exacerbate the issues that spawn from ejected material, damage, and spewing ash. Research has found that after the eruption of a supervolcano, it has often been recorded that there tends to be a massive cooling event that occurs around the world. This is due to the fact that the ejection of a large amount of volcanic ash causes a global darkness event, preventing the planet from sufficiently warming up and causing a global ice age. This appears to also have been the case a mere 100,000 years ago, when the Toba super-eruption occurred and nearly drove humanity to extinction. Prior to this event, there was an estimated 1 million human population. After the event took place, there were only 11,000 humans left, of which caused a massive bottleneck effect that allows us to see the time in which such an event took place. Additionally, this rapid death count occurred when the Toba super eruption caused a global blackout that lasted for more than 10 years. During this time, a massive ice age occurred and an atmospheric cooling event that lasted for another 1,000 years. Given these calculations, it's expected that if the Yellowstone supervolcano were to erupt in the modern day, the amount of ash spewed would travel through the atmosphere and block out the sun from all around the world, leading to a modern-day ice age that would prevent the sun from being seen for six to seven years in total, creating a seemingly endless darkness for all life on Earth and record low temperatures never before recorded. One of the main problems with the global cooling event is not that of the drop in temperatures all across the world, but rather that of its effect on crops on a massive global scale. With this expected worldwide blackout, researchers believe that, for more than six to seven years, it will be impossible for farmers around the world to grow any kind of produce or grain. This also means that it will also be impossible for farmers to take care of livestock of any kind. Considering the fact that agriculture is the lowest rung on the ladder of economic scale, this would lead to disastrous effects on industry, development, construction efforts, feeding citizens and the global economy. Essentially, there would be mass starvation all across the world as people raid grocery stores for the last remaining food in the world. Additionally, the blackout will lead to a number of wildlife populations immediately dying out as their habitats become destroyed, meaning that hunting and foraging will become impossible to sustain. Even a number of off-grid living situations would be disastrously affected, as the majority of doomsday preppers living on homesteads rely on local agriculture, solar panels for power, along with a number of other supplies that require their local habitats remaining intact. With these changes, the blackout will reach everywhere around the world, making no place safe enough to withstand such changes. Not only will this lead to riots within the short term, but it will overwhelmingly lead to the shutdown of government, civilization, and order itself. As mass starvation circles the globe, 
the human population will be expected to drop by an expected 95%, as the most developed countries will be affected the worst and the least developed countries will adapt the fastest. A lack of crops from around the world, the breakdown of infrastructure, inability to travel across damaged roads throughout the United States, as well as the complete six to seven year darkness that would follow the eruption, means that, at the end of these initial damages, the entire world would begin to enter a stage of total economic shutdown. This will first begin at the center of damaged cities and the inability for governments from around the world to offer aid of any kind. As the volcanic ash spreads and brings darkness around the world, it will only take three days before all of the grocery stores run empty, as the shipping trucks fail to deliver necessary goods. After this occurs, raiding of supplies will quickly begin, as the needs of the people from around the world and starvation would begin. This panic will cause the total breakdown of all law and authority, as people center around their individual needs. The inability would then quickly follow farmers being unable to grow and harvest crops, along with many crops from around the world immediately dying out. The only chance one would have at outlasting such an event would require them to have created an underground facility, of which wouldn't be affected to the large amount of falling ash, the threatening panic of other people fighting for resources, as well as the storage of enough food, water and supplies to last for seven years. Considering such a safe room does not exist for most, of which even most doomsday preppers only store enough food for six months to a year, outlasting such an event will prove to be impossible. Not only does this risk the extinction of all of human life on our planet, but we would see a global cooling event and an ice age lasting another 1,000 years following the six to seven year darkness. So to summarize, if the Yellowstone supervolcano were to erupt, it would have catastrophic and far-reaching effects. The immediate impact of the eruption would be devastating to the surrounding area, with a massive explosion producing a high-velocity ash cloud that could reach several miles into the atmosphere. The ash fall would be widespread, potentially covering much of the western United States and affecting air travel, agriculture and infrastructure. The surrounding areas would be subjected to a rain of ash and rock fragments, which would cause significant damage to buildings, vehicles and other structures. In addition to the immediate effects, the eruption could have long-term impacts on the global climate. The ash and gases released by the eruption would be carried by winds around the world, potentially causing a volcanic winter that could last for several years. This could have a significant impact on global agriculture and could cause widespread famine. Overall, the eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano would be a catastrophic event with far-reaching and long-lasting effects. While the probability of such an event occurring in the near future is considered low, ongoing monitoring and research are essential to ensure that the risk is minimized as much as possible. Something interesting has just been captured by a local resident in Oregon. The individual who captured the object called 911 and said that they could see a large fireball in the sky, noting that they were worried that it might have been a plane that was having some difficulty. The images were then posted to social media, with various people putting forward their own theories for what it could have been. The 911 call revealed that the individual had taken pictures of the event, with Polk County Sheriff's Office soon arriving on the scene and taking their own photographs. Once officials in Oregon arrived on the scene, they reported that they started looking for a crash site. However, as the investigation continued, it's reported that the Sheriff's Office along with locals in the area who turned up to help, couldn't find any evidence that something had crashed. Oddly enough, when investigators started to conduct further research, they reported that no plane was reported missing, but did note that there was a recent meteor shower in the area. The Polk County Sheriff's Office said the following, That's what it was more likely attributed to, or what was seen. Although we're not 100% sure. End quote. The mysterious object was first seen at around 4.50 in the afternoon, but the sheriff's office said that their helicopter searches turned up nothing. The size of a meteor that NASA or any other space agency can detect depends on a variety of factors, such as the sensitivity of their detection instruments, the distance between the meteor and the Earth, and the speed and trajectory of the meteor. NASA has a program called the Near Earth Object Observations Program, which is designed to detect, track, and characterize asteroids and comets that could potentially pose a threat to Earth. The program uses a combination of ground-based telescopes and space-based instruments to search for these objects. 
Generally, NASA and other space agencies can detect meteoroids as small as a few millimeters in size using ground-based telescopes. But they typically focus on detecting larger objects that could potentially pose a threat to Earth, such as those larger than 140 meters or 459 feet in diameter. However, it's worth noting that not all meteors are detected before they enter Earth's atmosphere. Small meteoroids can enter the atmosphere undetected and produce visible meteor trails, also known as shooting stars. These are usually harmless and pose no threat to Earth. Authorities further reported that after several investigations had taken place throughout the area, utilizing helicopters and people on the ground, there was no sign of the fireball and also no impact site that would help them positively identify what the object was. The Sheriff's Office posted on its Facebook page and reached out to the public, saying that they did not know the exact location of where this happened. What's strange is that this isn't the first time that one of these strange fireballs has been witnessed in the sky. Oddly enough, other residents have said that while seeing these strange objects, they've also heard mysterious booms and questioned whether jets had been scrambled to investigate whatever these objects are. As many have reported, these strange fireballs have been seen above various countries, and in most of these cases, the strange objects have prompted police to investigate the sighting further. Many have said the same thing, suggesting that the fireball is an aeroplane that was in trouble, but some have disputed this, saying that although planes do fly over most of these regions, a lot of the time one didn't fly over at the specific time that the object was seen. As of right now, people are still speculating as to what these objects are and where they're coming from. The Central Intelligence Agency has recently declassified decades' worth of documents that looked into mysterious aircrafts. This caused excitement among amateur researchers, with them saying that those who've looked into these sightings have known about them for years. There's been approximately 2,700 documents that have been uploaded online, most of which detail the government's involvement with strange aircrafts. Those who've spent years researching this topic have said this is direct proof that the government is interested in this topic and that it shows they've set aside large budgets to investigate what they are and how they're able to achieve what they do. However, although it seemed as though the Central Intelligence Agency was giving the general public an insight into some of their documents, those who looked into the files were not impressed. Basically, people couldn't read these documents, and in some cases, all of the information had been blacked out. Many comments followed a similar theme, with online users saying what was the point in releasing these documents if you're going to cross out all of the information. The Sheffield Incident Yorkshire in England isn't known for its abundance of mysterious aircrafts, but in 1997 on the 24th of March, local police received dozens of calls saying that some sort of aircraft had crashed in the region's lonely moors. The calls mentioned a low-flying plane or aircraft that had passed overhead towards the hills and mountains before disappearing. This was then followed by a bright flash and an explosion that could be heard for miles around. With reports of a crashed air vehicle, the police immediately began a search and rescue mission. A police helicopter, along with the fire service and mountain rescue, searched the area far and wide for any sign of the downed aircraft. Similarly, a local hospital was given notice of potential casualties. Soon after, air traffic control and the Royal Air Force were sent news of the crash by police. Strangely, each of the organizations reported back that they had no missing aircrafts and that no military vehicles were currently flying in the area. This then led to the use of a Royal Air Force Sea King helicopter to assist the police in their search, and yet, after covering 40 square miles with dozens of professionals and high-grade equipment, nothing was found. In response to the lack of any kind of physical debris, the police launched a phone line for reports of a crash site. Almost immediately, the phone line was inundated with callers claiming to have seen military jets, as well as some kind of mysterious aircraft. With so many people reporting similar sightings, the police were forced to increase the scope of their previous search and enlisted even more members of Mountain Rescue. Similarly, the Royal Air Force cordoned a 10-mile air exclusion zone around Howden Reservoir. Despite these efforts, nothing was recovered and the search was called off. Yorkshire police were left confused by the lack of evidence and were unsure of how to proceed. Some members of the public claimed the sighting was the cause of a phantom ghost plane. Later in 1997, a police representative said the following. No explanation was ever found 
and we remain open-minded about what was behind the sightings. End quote. In the years following, many theories have been posited in order to uncover what really happened over Sheffield that day. Some claim a cover-up had taken place by the military who were in pursuit of a mysterious aircraft. The crash, as the theory goes, was caused by a military jet. Since the Royal Air Force exclusion zone was put around the Howden Reservoir, this has led some to believe that the plane crashed into the water and bodies may have been retrieved during the search. Interestingly, the event was mentioned in the House of Commons on the 23rd of March in 1998. The then Ministry of Defence stated that there had been a low-flying military exercise taking place in that area on the 24th of March of the previous year. Scientists also support this, as the Seismology Department in Edinburgh confirmed that on the 24th of March, two sonic booms took place at 9.52 and 6 minutes past 10 in the evening. According to the department, these booms were likely to have been caused by an aircraft travelling at supersonic speeds, or space debris burning up in the atmosphere. Still, the Royal Air Force refutes any involvement in the events described by onlookers, specifically because it was illegal to break the sound barrier over the United Kingdom. Likewise, they state that their exclusion zone was not out of the ordinary for routine search and rescue operations, and that they had no record of sonic booms by the Royal Air Force. The facts don't all seem to add up in this case, and the peculiar event that took place over the Yorkshire Moors still perplexes many enthusiasts to this day. What exactly did crash near Sheffield in 1997? Many amateur researchers who've looked into this case have said that the Royal Air Force are unlikely to admit that they were involved in this strange event and suggested that it was likely covered up by officials in the region. One user suggested that a mysterious aircraft was seen above the area and so the Royal Air Force scrambled a couple of jets to investigate what the object was. This would explain the sonic booms that were heard in the evening. Investigations carried on and said that what most likely happened was a chase between the strange aircraft and the jets, but suggested that perhaps one of the jets malfunctioned and then crashed into the ground. Oddly enough, others who've looked into this case have said that pilots from across the world have reported the same thing, saying that when their jets get close to these objects, they start acting strange, noting that these aircrafts seem to have the ability to turn off the jet's electrics. This has caused some confusion in recent years, as the jets aren't being directly attacked but are having some of their major functions shut down. As of right now, there's several of these documents that go into detail about mysterious aircrafts. One question that people have when it comes to these events is why don't governments just be open and honest with the general public? The answer to that question comes down to national security. They've openly admitted that these aircrafts are a national security threat as they've been observed outmaneuvering their jets and also making their way into restricted airspace. This brings up a variety of different questions. How are they able to do this? How can they outmaneuver our most advanced jets? How do they achieve the speeds they've been observed doing? And ultimately, who do they belong to? As of right now, we can only speculate as to what these objects are and hope that within the near future, the public will be told more about these mysterious aircrafts. Electromagnetic bursts in ground could predict earthquakes. It is possible to generate highly accurate predictions regarding weather by observing atmospheric patterns. One natural disaster from whom prediction remains much more elusive is the earthquake. Although it is generally understood which areas lie along fault lines and are therefore more prone to earthquakes, nailing down exactly when the crust will begin to shift and move has proven to be an altogether more complicated task. However, that might be changing in the very near future as scientists begin to piece together and correlate underground readings with the occurrences of earthquakes. Seismologists, or those who study geophysics and the ways that seismic waves move through the Earth, have long been aware of underground electric fields and their tendency to produce small, hardly noticeable anomalies several weeks prior to an earthquake. They have been unable to determine what exactly causes these changes, it has often been proposed that understanding the cause could be a breakthrough in earthquake prediction, and new research has finally provided some potential answers. Recent analysis and study of these occurrences has led scientists to speculate that the electromagnetic bursts 
could be triggered by gas that is trapped and built up in what is known as a fault valve prior to an earthquake. The rock within Earth's crust at the fault creates an impermeable barrier to underground water, which causes electrified carbon dioxide and methane to break through as the pressure causes cracks in the valve. The research team tested their hypothesis in a customized lab setup, with promising results. As research continues, seismologists hope that they will be able to gather some insight about how measuring these electromagnetic bursts could lead to enhancing earthquake prediction measures. Currently, the first defense against earthquakes are the building materials and strategies used to resist the shifting movement of the Earth. Flexible steel that is built to bend and tilt with the forces applied during a quake is a common strategy, especially in high-rises built in earthquake-prone areas. Adding metal supports within walls helps to keep structures supported and safely transmit pressure and other forces while building foundation anchors deep into the bedrock has also been shown to increase favorable outcomes during quakes. No building is truly earthquake-proof, and being able to have a heads-up as to when the next seismic plate activity will begin could be a huge step in defending against loss of life and property that unfortunately is rather common after a quake. Fire damage has been shown to be one of the most significant contributors to loss during an earthquake, and knowing when one was coming could allow for authorities to begin to prepare supplies and materials to prevent fires. Additionally, individuals could take shelter much sooner and could choose much safer areas than are typically available when surprised with an earthquake. The ability to use these electromagnetic bursts to hopefully begin to understand when earthquakes happen and what precedes this seismic activity could save an enormous number of lives, as well as prevent the large-scale destruction that is so common in the wake of an earthquake. Much more study is still needed. The current results are very promising and hopeful. An ancient supervolcano has been discovered in the southeastern part of Hong Kong. Following the subject of overdue supervolcanoes, an ancient one has been uncovered in Hong Kong. The last eruption was 140 million years ago. The average supervolcano is thought to ideally erupt every 50,000 years. It's believed the previous eruption created ash clouds of 1,300 cubic kilometers, which, if it happened today, could consume the entirety of Hong Kong in an ashy abyss. It's dubbed the High Island Supervolcano. Denise Tang, a Hong Kong engineer, claims that in terms of the time period, the final pulse of the past eruption occurred at some point between the Jurassic and Cretaceous epochs on Earth long before humans walked the Earth. The hardened ash ruins of this eruption still exist to this day in the form of wondrous columns of solid ash across the High Island East Dam. These columns are a tourist destination and attract many visitors annually to witness the frightful wonders of nature. This ancient supervolcano is one of many that was active between 180 million and 80 million years ago on the Chinese continental seaboard. It's believed to be similar to the volcanoes Krakatau and Tambora in Indonesia, except significantly larger. Volcanoes are nature's work of art. They are tall, impressive formations that link the underground world of scorching magma with the surface. But for all their destructive beauty, they are incredibly dangerous. Hidden stones reveal drought warnings from the past. It's often said that we can learn a great deal from the past, and that task is made much easier when the humans of the past lay out clear, albeit dire, warnings specifically directed at those of us in the future. Recent conditions of intense drought in Europe have caused rivers and bodies of water to shrink across the continent. These receding water lines along the banks of the Ebe River in the Czech Republic and Germany revealed stones with ancient carvings in them, alerting those who could see the message to the hard times they were about to face due to the low water levels. The carvings on the stones, which are known as hunger stones, bear the German inscription Wenn du mich siehst, dann weine, which translates to the foreboding message, if you see me, then weep. 
These etchings date back centuries to 1616 and are a way for researchers and citizens alike to hear the voices of the past echoing across the centuries, warning of the potential consequences of impending drought. A previous study of the markers conducted by Czech researchers in 2013 stated that the riverside markings are chiseled with the years of hardship and the initials of authors lost to history. It expressed that drought had brought a bad harvest, lack of food, high prices and hunger for poor people. Before 1900, the following droughts are commemorated on the stone. 1417, 1616, 1707, 1746, 1790, 1800, 1811, 1830, 1842, 1868, 1892 and 1893. Based on the markings that have been found documenting drought levels through the centuries, it's likely that the current severe drought being experienced throughout Europe this year is one of the most severe that the continent has experienced in approximately 500 years. These droughts, which stress the vegetation and animal life, leading to widespread consequences, are likely brought on in increasing intensity as a result of the growing effects of climate change. As global temperatures rise, precipitation patterns change and evaporation increases, drying out even large bodies of water such as the Yib River, where the hunger stones were found. Although drought-induced receding water lines are never a good sign for the people of today, they can frequently tell us a great deal about the people of the past in more ways than just the hunger stones. As water levels lower, artifacts that have been buried beneath the waves resurface for the first time in centuries, allowing researchers unique glimpses into the culture and lifestyles of the past. Among the uncovered finds revealed by this latest and most severe drought have been several shipwrecks, weapons and other historical artifacts across Italy, Germany and the UK. With the current levels of drought across the continent because of the increasing global temperatures, the dire warning of if you see me then weep sounds all the more menacing as citizens in the region hope and pray for the relief of rain. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Thank you.